1943. All right. Grayson Grunhafer, we'll, we'll discuss football. Grayson, how about Baylor, Tennessee? Three singles matches into a third set, 2-2 two, two with Tennessee. Yeah, guys, I've been following it a little bit throughout the day, and I know uh, Stacks is, is really the guy that everyone's kind of counting on right now. He's on serve right now, and if he wins his serve right here, they're going to go up 3-2. So that would be a great a great start uh, to get them to 3-2, and then you're going to be looking at the, the one and two line with Adrian Boyton and uh, uh, Mateus Soto and see if one of those two guys can uh, come up with a big win. I mean, it's pretty amazing, guys. Uh, what they've been able to do, Michael Woodson getting this, them to this point. Uh, they're in the final four. So now you just got to hope that things fall the right way. How much does it affect them? Though I mean, yesterday they didn't really have to go to three sets all, but I think one time. But going to three sets before you're, you, if you do win, having to play again in, in another day or so. Yeah, I mean, it affects you. But I would say that the other side is probably going to be a slugfest as well. I, I don't think anyone's getting out of here without – you know, losing at least a couple matches. So I, I really think the competition heats up when you get to the final four. So, and once you get to a national championship, somehow guys find their legs again. So I, I don't think that's going to be a problem for the two teams that end up making it. So Grayson, we just talked to Baylor's quarterback commit, Zach Pyron, uh, just filling us in, you know, I'm playing on an injury and uh, the elite 11 camp last weekend, hoping to get an invite for that. We'll see how that goes. But uh, how much do you think he's kind of opened some eyes uh, already here in this off season, just in terms of you know those who evaluate, do the rankings and things like that, and and what did you make of his performance last weekend at the Elite Eleven? Yeah, so he made a big jump in the rankings this week after his performance in Nashville. People were a little behind on that. I know as far as Sikkim three sixty five goes, we've had him as a high three star for a while, an eighty eight. Um, but he actually made the jump all the way to an 89, so he's right below that four-star territory now, at least on 247. I think Rival still needs to adjust, so we'll see what they come up with. But uh, he's finally jumped into the top 700 nationally, so still very underrated. Uh, that's mainly because of his rating currently on Rival. So he had a great weekend. Uh, very happy for him to finally get some recognition. Uh, hopefully he's able to make the Elite 11. Baylor already has some some nice history of elite 11 guys on the current roster jacob zeno gary bohannon uh kyron drones uh, drones the only one who actually made it uh what was an elite 11 uh finalist you know he made the final 11 um but the other guys did not but hey it's a great honor either way if he's able to get invited and i know based on talking to him he seems like he thinks it's a real possibility, so I'm hoping it happens for him. He said if not, then he will have a larger chip than he already has on his shoulder. I'm not surprised that Jared Atkinson is leaving. Uh, we've looked at the actual evidence of the statistics and production, and then we also know what he's been through personally with his mother, but also many things he's also dealt with with the changes here and there. Your thoughts about him? Have you heard any thoughts? I talked to him for just a little bit. Didn't want to say much, but he was going to go home and kind of discuss it with the family. Your thoughts about Jared Atkinson and, in the end, uh, him leaving? Yeah, you know, I'm, I'm sad that it obviously comes to an end because, Atkinson is one of those guys who I think is a very loved Baylor player. He's also a guy who I think he, he, you know, he never lived up to the hype as far as what he was coming into Baylor. And I know um, a lot of that has to do with off the field stuff and, and different things like that, but he never really reached his potential. And, you know, when you see guys like Javon Gibson and Elijah Bean as true freshmen get on campus and they're already uh, probably better than Jared, who's been – you know, at Baylor for, what, six years now, I think, five years. Um, and it just makes things really tough. But I'm excited for him. I'm excited for his next stop. I think he could do some pretty good things wherever he goes. And I think he'll be a nice addition to, to probably a group of five school or, or maybe FCS. But uh, hopefully somewhere in Texas we can continue to see him. What do you think of uh, – was, was Jaden Blue? Is that his name? Yeah, Jayden, the running back, yeah. Jaden Blue for that's committed to Texas sitting out his senior season. Yeah, so I'm going to play a little devil's advocate, Paul. And you you and I, we, we obviously did the fancy football podcast a lot. And I know people always talk about age when it comes to the running back position. Age, how many carries you take, how, how many times you run the football, the toll it takes on your body. And I think, I, I think that's starting to kind of translate and kind of trickle down a little bit to the high school level 
as, you know, a guy like Jaden Blue, I mean, if you look at his numbers, I mean, he had 227 carries last year at 6A level, uh, was very productive. I mean, he's a very, very good player, but he mentioned, obviously, in his tweet, you know, the running back position, how it can really wear down the body. Um, and by him saying that, you know, I don't know this for sure, but by him saying that, I have a feeling that Texas has probably been saying similar stuff to him, how, you know, you should take care of your body and not, you know, not take as many hits. And, you know, maybe that's something that, that they want to do. And obviously Jaden felt like it was something that he wanted to do. So I'm okay with it. I think my biggest concern is something y'all have mentioned. If this becomes a trend, obviously you don't want that to happen. The high school game is so fun and so cool. And you only get to do that once. And so you don't want to see kids, you know, a bunch of kids miss out on that opportunity. Um, but I, I also get it from probably his perspective and trying to think about the long-term game. And he is a five-star guy. So five-star guys do have a higher hit rate as far as making it to the NFL. So I guess I understand it to a certain extent. Yeah, we're starting to worry about high school running backs carries, though. And this is just a going off the rails quickly. Because, I mean, at what point do you go, like, hey, I had 2,000 carries my or 200 carries my sophomore year. I'm going to sit out my junior year and my, you know, like, I mean, at what point does it, it's like you're 16, 17 years old. Your, your body's built to take hits right now. I mean, I, I understand both sides. It's, it's kind of just a crazy deal, though. Grayson, uh, where is Baylor as far as recruiting right now? Kind of what is the latest on, on that front with this class? Yeah, so I, I guess uh, just with 2021, they're still looking at the transfer portal, still trying to figure out if they can make any more additions to the offensive line or the defensive line. I know they've been looking at guys to possibly fill uh, the interior position to give uh, Ahu Aika a, a true backup. I know that that's something they've been looking for, haven't really been able to find in the portal. And then obviously they continue to look at the offensive line, whether that be the tackle position or trying to add a really high quality player uh, to that group. Um, as far as 2022 goes, I mean, truthfully, the, the biggest thing that it is happening is obviously official visits start in June. That's going to be a big deal. Uh, camps start in June. So you're going to see more offers come out to guys who uh, maybe we haven't heard of uh, recently, or at least we haven't heard their name connected to Baylor as much. Um, but when they're able to get on campus, Baylor can get true measurements, true speed, true evaluation. Uh, you'll probably see more offers come out, which I think could make up a, a little bit of a chunk of this class as well. So really, I would say we're kind of in a, a little bit of a standstill mode right now. I know that uh, there are positions that need to be filled. Wide receiver and defensive back specifically really need to be addressed. Um, but, but yeah, I, I think with official visits coming up, I think we're going to get to know a lot more information uh, before we hit G July. By the way, Nick Stakoviak won the third set. Baylor up 3-2 to two now over Tennessee with the two singles matches, both into the third set as we monitor that. So Baylor got the transfer. Obviously, the young man from uh, Buffalo, we had him on. You were all over it, Colt. And, you know, all the stuff that's been written. You, every time I say, okay, that's it, there's always one more. Is there one more coming, Grayson? I, I do think that they're going to add another one. I know there's been a lot of conversations on the board about, you know, scholarship numbers and, and things like that. But I, I do believe that the staff is going to find a way to make the numbers work. Um, I know specifically right now, I think they're at 84 last count. So uh, how are they going to add a bunch more? Well, I, you know, that may come with attrition. Um, now, can I say when exactly they're going to add someone? No, I would say that they would like to do it before June. Um, and, and with their constant activity on the transfer portal, I just it just leads me to believe that they're probably going to try to go out and get another offensive lineman. It just seems like it's heading in that direction. Um, so we'll see if they can make the numbers work. We'll see if they're able to put out some more offers before June. Uh, that way, if they do want to get someone on campus, they can do it before summer one happens. Uh, and all the players report, I believe, on that March 31st weekend. So uh, a lot of action still to go. Ten days is uh, an eternity in the transfer portal. It seems like there's 20 guys that enter every day is what it feels like. So uh, there'll still be some names out there, and we'll see if Baylor's able to address it. But, yeah, if you were to ask me right now, I do think Baylor adds another offensive lineman uh, to go along with uh, Jacob Gall and Grant Miller, who they've already added. Okay, I want you guys to now take that uh, bear cast. I want it to go two and a half hours. It's not long enough. Craig, you, your head would explode, wouldn't it? 
No, we're not doing more than we're doing right. Well, I mean, we could potentially one day, but we're not doing two and a half hours no, I'm just, right now. I, I don't we mean, used to. I, I, yeah, I used to. Yeah. I, hey, keep up the great work, Grayson. Thanks for your time. Have a great weekend. Grayson Grunhaper, Sikkim365.com, recruiting coordinator uh, and, uh, and obviously analyst as well. Jack, one more time.